Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Tego Cyber's channel. We're sitting here again with Shannon. We wanted to talk about some potential ways that people were throwing around ideas on how to curb ransomware and these hacks that have been going on. Shannon, I give the reins to you. Thanks, Michael. So there's a couple different ways that professionals have recommended that we try to curb the ram rampant increase in ransomware attacks that have, has occurred lately. And one of those is possibly banning the ability or making it illegal for companies to pay the ransom. The idea behind this argument, of course, is that when you pay ransom to cyber criminals, it's just funding the criminal enterprise and allowing them to make updates to their code, um, improving their software, and of course, you're, you're funding criminal activity. So mm -hmm. that is an argument. Um, I'm not sure that's a great way to stop ransomware attacks, simply because for companies that are stuck between the proverbial rock and a hard place where their systems are encrypted versus being able to pay a ransom and perhaps recover their systems, you know, that's a very hard decision for an organization to make. There have been cases where um, hospitals in New York State have chosen not to pay a ransom, and then they spend six to nine months rebuilding their computer system. So it's not an easy decision to make, and there are a lot of consequences and a lot of time and effort that goes into rebuilding computer systems sure. when they're encrypted. Yeah, you know, um, it's, it's kind of like the whole point of ransomware is for them to charge an amount that you're willing to pay because the time or money it would take to not pay it is more than what they're asking for. So you're right, like, well, it's kind of the convenience factor, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that, that's kind of hard because um, yes, while ideally the whole thing of, you know, don't do business with terrorists, don't give in to people's demands is great. And largely if you're paying them, you could just be paying them to come back and do it to you again in the future. Um, mm -hmm. It seems too ideal and not really pragmatic enough to say, we just won't allow anybody to pay. Right. Now, another way that some have recommended to stop ransomware payments is to ban the use of cryptocurrencies for everybody, which is probably not at all a reasonable or likely argument or likely thing to happen. But that has come out basically in saying, you know, the use of cryptocurrency has allowed ransomware to grow to where it is today, but people might be surprised to actually find out that ransomware has existed since 1989, and it was first distributed on one of those big giant floppy disks um, to participants of a um, AIDS conference, I believe it was through the World Health Organization or one of those organizations, and basically somebody got a list of the participants, sent out this, you know, AIDS conference informational disk, mm -hmm. stuck it in, um, encrypted those computer systems way back when in the 1980s, and then asked um, to, in order to decrypt your computer system, please send a money order to a PO box in Panama. Yeah. Um, so, you know, cyber criminals, even if we ban cryptocurrency, cyber criminals will find a way. And even officials at CISA have agreed that banning cryptocurrency is really not an option for stopping ransomware because yeah. they will find a way to get paid. Yeah, I would say um, cryptocurrency is the, the proverbial letting the cat out of the bag. It's not easy to put the cat back in the bag. It's, <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's been a large force. And I mean, it maybe. Maybe in 2011, they could have tried to ban Bitcoin before it really mm -hmm. kicked off. But now there's thousands of cryptocurrencies and there's, there's really no chance. And you had mentioned before that you can track them now largely too. So we, we have options for it. But like this uh, common adage is the man who invented the car, invented the high-speed chase, invented the you know getaway bank robbery in the, in the vehicle. Right. We didn't try to ban cars. It's just that with along with advances in technology, we then have more problems stacked on top of it. Because criminals are criminals. They're opportunists. They're going to take advantage of everything they can to do things. Right. And if you look at the evolution of cybercrime as well, you know, we started with the penny stock scams and then right. it went into the Nigerian print schemes. And, you know, cybercrime has evolved over time to become much more sophisticated. Um, so we can expect, you know, to see continued ransomware attacks. It's more, um, even the Biden administration has now started encouraging organizations to take cybersecurity seriously and put protections in place. And even if you can't stop the cyber criminals from getting in and launching attack, there are things that you can do to mitigate to, to you know, 
through segmenting networks, you can, you know, stop the spread of ransomware attacks once they are able to get in. So there, there are things that you can do to mitigate the risks, stop some of the damage that's done through these ransomware attacks. So it's more, I don't think that there's necessarily been a giant explosion of ransomware in the past month where we've seen the attacks on Colonial Pipeline and, and, and the meat producer factories and stuff. But it's more, I think, some of the impacts are impacting the general public now with gas prices and meat yeah. production and groceries and stuff like that, where people are becoming aware of it. I mean, we look back, you, if you remember, there was uh, WannaCry and not Petia. That was in 2017. In, uh, in WannaCry, it infected, I think, 200,000 computers in just four days. And not Petia, that was $10 billion worth of um, losses due to that wiper ransomware attack. So um, ransomware has been around for a long time. And I think it's just now people are like, oh, it actually does have real world consequences and impacts in our daily lives. Yeah, that's a good point. This isn't something new. This is something that's been just going on for a long time. Um, it's interesting that the public is now getting more affected. I mean, if I choose between Bitcoin and Tofurky, I might have to make a choice there eventually. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think I think this is something that's going to be solved through through nuanced, you know, companies actually going in and and putting up better security and getting ahead of this stuff proactively and also licking our wounds and learning from our mistakes is going to be mm -hmm. a part of it rather than just grandstanding with prohibition across things. So it just right. that just sounds like the government's trying to come up with an easy solution to an actually complicated problem. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Shannon. Well, thank you for coming on. Thank you for sharing your thoughts on this. If anyone has any questions, don't be afraid to shoot them over. We'll be happy to work through anything you guys have for us and stay tuned for more updates coming soon. Shannon, have a wonderful day. You too.